take action. And like right now, we're doing a podcast because I threw it out there to the Secrets of Success community. Hey, I'm going to do podcasts until the uh, May 8th of the Think and Grow Rich Challenge. Who wants to do it? And you're one of the very first person that raised your hand. And here we are doing the podcast. And just like, hey, who wants to go play golf with my, I don't even remember how I put it out there, but you just made it happen. And so that's the reward for you for making it happen. And action takers are money makers and they get whatever they want. Welcome to the Miracle Plant Podcast, the show that inspires, promotes, and gives you a daily dose of inspiration from the people who have used cannabis to change their lives in extraordinary ways. Here's your host, Justin Benton. Welcome to the Prodigy Kid Podcast, where we interview successful entrepreneurs and find out what they were doing as kids entrepreneurial and when they had their entrepreneur aha. And now if they have kids, what are they doing their kids uh, to teach them about life, success and, and making money? So today we've got Justin Benton on the line. He's um, he's with us and uh, I appreciate it. Welcome to the show, Justin. Thanks, man. Great to see you again. Last time we were playing golf with Myron Golden in yeah. Orlando, Florida. But here we are now in the in the confines of of the virtual world and happy to be here. I love talking about the entrepreneurial journey. I love talking about kids. So I can't wait to get in it and, uh, you know, help your audience. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I, I appreciate it so much. So, um, I just want to give a little bit of background about you. You're a successful entrepreneur. You've got hemp one Oh, it's one Oh one hemp dot dot org. Is it? You got it. Okay. So that's your website and, and you went on a whole journey with that and, and are doing very well. And you found yourself in the click funnels world. And you found yourself in the inner circle, which is a, a program that's 50 grand a year. And next thing you know, you find yourself um, being partnered with Russell Brunson on his latest part project, Secrets of Success. And that that's, you know, Russell Brunson, for those that don't know, a lot of people listening probably will know, but he's he's like a, an oracle when it comes to marketing. And you're kind of like, in a way, you remind me of Steve Larson because, he, you know, you have a once in a lifetime opportunity to partner with him with and something that is, is extremely important for not, not, you know, for humanity, never mind for the online marketing world, what you guys are doing is, is tremendous and bringing all the old knowledge. Like if you look at the books behind me, I appreciate it. Like you have no idea how many times I've read Think and Grow Rich. You have no ideas how many times I've given that book away because I know, you know, those books were given to me when I was young, I'm talking teenager and it just it, it's wild to to know that you guys are going in and finding all those classic books from 1850 to, to 1950 when the the new thought movement came around and and people started realizing like oh my god you can think and actually change your life and become rich so you guys russell was collecting all this stuff and you guys are creating this this huge library of all these antique and classic books and you're slowly bringing them back to to the to the forefront of of, of people where they they were for once forgotten sitting in people's collections and closets and and you're kind of like you know the, Russell was an idea guy but you're kind of a finisher a doer a guy putting stuff together and it's just amazing the opportunity you have and and I just I, I love exactly what you're doing so I just wanted to give people an idea of where you're coming from and and what exactly you're all about so it, it's it's it truly is awesome. Um, and what I wanted to get into is with you having all this success and of course you didn't just, just jump into that and raise your hand and he said, okay, I'll pick you. You obviously have had some really, really good success and, and things that made him realize like, okay, this guy is my guy. So as a kid, what were you doing entrepreneurial? Were you shoveling driveways, mowing lawns? Was there, was you selling stuff? What were you, what, what would have led you to know that this was going to be where you ended up? Well, I was uh, I was uh, the oldest of six. I grew up in Omaha, Nebraska, and um, you know, hard work, work ethic, salt of the earth type folks. I mean, uh, my old man had a, a, a snow shoveling business in the winter, so we were expected to get up at four in the morning and put on our uh, you know so snow suits, and we went out and shoveled all all morning and until the afternoons and. You know, I, uh, you know, things, I guess things are seemed a little bit different these days, but I mean, we had chores. I mean, I literally thought that um, my parents had me just so we could keep the house clean and the lawn mowed and the, and the, and the leaves raked up and vacuumed and we did the dishes in the bathrooms. I mean, it was, 
So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it was, that's just the, the reality that I grew up in. And, and obviously looking back on it, that, you know, that teaches you responsibility and you can take pride in your work. Uh, as far as my entrepreneurial journey starting, I mean, my first job was when I was 16 years old and I, I grew up in Omaha, Nebraska, as I said, and for whatever reason, Omaha was the uh, direct marketing capital of the world. And if, for those of you that are old enough, remember long distance was based on how far the call was made with your landline. If you know what those things are, yeah. rotary phones oh, yeah. um, that we, so in, in Omaha, they, they don't have um, accents. So people could understand everything everyone was saying from around the country, you know, like there's Boston in the South and, you know, even maybe California. And and so anyways, for whatever reason, when I was 16, I, I had a, a telemarketing job. So sorry if I, col I called you and I closed you on some new long distance program. I think I was selling MCI or it was actually called LDDS back in the day. So literally I got my, uh, you know, bitch in Camaro. I was 16. I had to pay for it. And I, and, uh, I was really good at, um, inside sales or telemarketing, helping people switch over. And so that was where my entrepreneurial journey started. And, and it, I know it's not, I was, I was an employee, but it was sales. And so I just really took to communication. Uh, I really enjoyed, um, writing my own paycheck. I was like the youngest kid in the, in the company, but I was winning all the awards, and uh, that really just kind of set me up like, you know, we all hope to find our thing, especially for our children. I have four kids and, um, you know, like my oldest is 14, Zoe, and she's uh, a volleyball player. And, um, you know, we I grew up with athletics and oh, my gosh, I played every single sport and, and so did my wife. And so um, there was obviously some DNA athletic ability there. And so my, my daughter found volleyball and now she's doing the club thing. We're flying up to Reno for an event. Uh, this weekend. And so that that's the, where the pride, I just, you want to find something for your children. I believe as parents that our job is to expose them, show them new things, whether it's arts or uh, music or sports or academics or whatever it is, just show them everything, give them everything. And another great thing to do, if you can, I highly recommend it is travel with your children, you know, not just in this country, which is wonderful, but go overseas and see different cultures and different values and learn but when you help your child find the thing that lights them up, it's so cool because they can find their confidence. They can find how to overcome adversity. Uh, and for me, it was sales. Like when I was 16 years old, I mean, I was I was I was a really good baseball player growing up. But, um, you know, I walked on in college, but I, I didn't you know, that wasn't I was I'm not playing. I never played third base for the New York Mets, which was the goal. So when when the sales thing came along for me, that's when it, the light bulb went off. And I was like, wow. I can control my own paycheck. Um, you know, I can listen um, and, and, and just talk to people and, and understand where their problems are and, and solve them, whether it was getting them a better deal on their long distance or, or what have you. So that's really where my entrepreneurial journey started. And you, and back in the day, all your friends are probably getting jobs, making eight, $9 an hour. And now you're, you're buying a Camaro and, and making, mm -hmm. winning all these awards. And you, at that point you realized that, Maybe you had been lied to with the traditional system where you have to be a broke teenager and 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 get an eight dollar an hour job and whatever. You just the, the window is opened up. How were you at like school? Were you like a good, good student or were you kind of like the not so good when it came? Well, to it's funny people? because, you know, um, my my mom, who's very into uh, um, academics, she was one of 15 uh, children growing up in the Midwest, you know, the true baby boomers. And so going to school, going to college was very, very important for her. So all of us, um, you know, graduated and I went to a good school called Creighton university and, um, you know, but in high school, my, my, we, we I went to a public school and, in this little small town called Plattsmith, Nebraska. And it was, you know, I mean, there wasn't, there was a couple good teachers. Mrs. Smith was a good English teacher, but it really was just kind of like a walk in the park. I think I got like a three, five GPA or something, but I didn't hardly work at all. Mm. Um, and, and then when I went to Creighton, because I didn't really, you know, learn how to learn, um, my, I really struggled because th this was top, top academics. They call Creighton like the Harvard of the Midwest. It's a very, very mm. prestigious school. And so I really struggled, but again, I also struggled not because, um, you know, I didn't understand the concepts. I didn't understand similar to Russell Brunson. I didn't understand what the point was because exactly. this is back. I graduated in, in college from 1990 in 1999. And so, um, I didn't understand the point. My, my old man was a successful, um, businessman working in New York city. 
I just wanted to get out into the real world. And back then you were expected to get good grades in high school, graduate from college, and then uh, uh, somebody would give you a good job and, and take care of you for 20 or 30 years. You'd retire with a pension and that's how you did it. Well, that system's broke. It was broke back then, but I still went through the motions because that's what we were taught. That's what our parents were yeah. taught. And so then I graduated from Creighton, kind of by the skin of my teeth. And uh, But I also did a semester abroad in Dominican Republic. So check that out if you get a chance, kids and parents. Let your children go for a semester abroad somewhere. And so anyways, I go out and I move out to Charlotte, North Carolina, and I'm going to get my first real job with my $50,000, $60,000 education or whatever it was. And I find a job and I get a job. I interview. I get a job that this was 1999. So there was the Y2K movement, right? So I get a job in MIS, which is Management Information Systems, which is Computer Sciences, which is like me programming. And like, this is the last thing I should ever be doing. But I got the job and I, you know, smoothed my way in there. I'm making $50,000 a year. I go in for a, a yearly update and they, and they give me like a 4% raise which is basically like what inflation was. And so then at that moment, I knew corporate America was not for me. And that's where the lie came in. I was mm -hmm. like, okay, I was in sales. I controlled my paycheck. This is not for me. So I actually moved back to Omaha, Nebraska, and I took over the family business of real estate, uh, some commercial and some residential. And so that's when I, my entrepreneurial journey really began. And, um, and so after that, I got back into direct marketing, believe it or not, uh, and started a company. And I was, uh, at first I was, uh, you know, kind of in charge of sales and, and I built out a big sales team. Again, similar to Russell, we would go to, um, you know, success magazine, watch Zig Ziglar. And I would take the guys out. I, Jeff, Jeffrey Gittermore is a friend of mine. Now we would, the little red book of sales and, oh, yeah, and that. we would take him, uh, take, take them to that. And so that's when my, I really start to kick it up, but here's the one good thing that I learned from going to corporate America. The best thing that I learned other than I didn't want to be there is the the three days before you started and it was a good company it was called dst interactive and they they were responsible for all the software for direct tv and so uh before you started you had to take a three day um off campus <clears throat> you're not even started yet i mean you're hired um, but you're not going into the office a three day uh, webinar, not webinar, seminar on um, how to uh, not, yeah, what is it? Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen mm -hmm. Covey. And so that was the first book that I studied deep for three days and it blew my mind. Like, how to, like, you know, worry about focus on things you can control and expand your circle of influence, begin with the end in mind, uh, different quadrants of the four quadrants of, and it, it was the first time, and I had gone to a really good college. And my mom was a you know smart, great mom and school psychologist. My dad was a successful businessman in New York City. No one taught me that I could control my mind and have those kinds of uh, mindset uh, so power. So that was your that that was your gateway book yes. into, into a different world. Personal development. Mm -hmm. What do you think when it comes to the because you went you went the traditional route, of course, and and you were one of those ones that should not have gone the traditional route. Now, what do you think the school system would be like if if like people skills 101 was actually like one of the one of the curriculum classes right up there with finance and, and maybe entrepreneurship? How do you think like what do you think that would do for the country? Well, I mean, I think at this point, um, you know, our school system, I believe it was started by Rockefeller. Um, is it's 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 basically it's training human beings to be workers and and the, you know you the bell rings you sit down you shut up you don't talk to your neighbor um, you don't collaborate um, you know it, it's not set up for the world that we live in um, I think they they say the average person goes through seven career changes now and only like twenty percent of the people are using their college degrees um, I'm not a big advocate of traditional school uh, now I do have my kids uh, my oldest is in eighth grade and they go down from there. They are in a nice private little Catholic school here uh, in Ventura, California. I, I like the values they teach. I like the principle. It's small. They, I mean, I, it's, it's good for them. Um, and there are really what you're trying to do is learn how to learn. But where, where are we teaching our kids these soft skills, these people skills, these entrepreneurial skills? Um, all of my children know that there's no pressure to go to college whatsoever. Now, if you want to go to college, great. And, you know, I want them to earn it and have some type of scholarship or have some, you know, meat in the game, uh, you know, and whether that is ac academic or, I mean, if you're going to be a doctor, great, go to go to school. If you're going to be a lawyer, great. 
accountant, um, you know, something where you actually get a license or there's something that's tangible from going. If you're just going to get a marketing degree or a business degree or just to get a degree, it's pointless. I uh, forget who it was. I think it's Google. Uh, I just read the other day. They're not even looking at where you went to college. They're not even asking for it on the resume. And I know Russell's the same way. Russell doesn't even look at a resume. He looks at your personality profile test and see, it sees if your personality profile test looks the way um, for the particular job that you're hiring for. So right now it's on us as parents, podcasts like yours, which are great to 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 teach our children to this. And 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 that's what I know we're going to get into the Thinking Grow Rich Challenge, which is coming up. That's what this is all about, is getting this information into the hands of the next generation. Yeah, to know that, like, don't judge the fish on how, how I can climb a tree. Like, mm -hmm. if you're a fish, you need to learn how to swim better. And don't worry yep. about climbing the tree because we get the monkey for that. Like, yep. one thing, I want to make an observation, and this is my, and, and I appreciate this totally. Like, so we, we did play golf and we, 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 we hung out for a while, but... The, the impression I got from you is you're the type, like I felt better being around you, you know, like you, you didn't really know too much about my background or who I was, but I was a VIP to you. Like I was a CEO of a, of a hundred million dollar company, like, like, and, and your ability to, to move around, like some people like, like Russell, Russell and, and, and others, they're, they're kind of not really wanting to talk or whatever, but it seems like, you have this this way of of working and, and dealing with people now is that something that kind of comes naturally to you because you said it was kind of later in your life you found seven habits or is that something that you've really worked on and focused on honing a skill is it just because of the sales and knowing the tactics of the the training that you you went through or is it just something you've always as a young kid even been like real charismatic and 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 been that kid that had a lot of friends or whatever maybe it was because you were a, a, like maybe where you're the middle child and you always had to like or the youngest maybe where you had to be like on your best behavior with your brothers and sisters to not get beat up like what's the background behind that i appreciate well, I, it here yeah no I, and, and it was fun playing with you and, and i um I, I genuinely care about people i know maybe people say that i mean i really care about people i'm i'm very high on roi if you take the disc profile mm. uh both again russell and i are now roi most people think of money but I think of what's more important than money, uh, your time <laughs> and your energy. You eventually will always figure that out, especially when the time starts to run down. Um, and so, but, you know, obviously we were at a great event, Funnel Hacking Live. Uh, Myron was there. I, I like to um, reward and encourage people to take action. And like right now, we're doing a podcast because I threw it out there to the Secrets of Success community. Hey, I'm going to do podcasts until the uh, May 8th of the Think and Grow Rich Challenge. Who wants to do it? And you're one of the very first person that raised your hand. And here we are doing the podcast. And just like, hey, who wants to go play golf with my, I don't even remember how I put it out there, but you just made it happen. And so that's the reward for you for making it happen. And action takers are money makers and they get whatever they want. Why am I that way? Um, I think it's nature versus nurture. I mean, again, if you take the personality profile test and not just to be plugging everything, but go to understand.me where you can take your personality exactly. tests. Um, I'm an extrovert. I'm not a crazy extrovert. I'm like a 65, 70% out of 100 extrovert. Russell is an introvert. So he's like a 30 or 35% um, introvert. So it's just a matter of, so extroverts, that's the, that is the, uh, the nature Part. So literally, and again, since my mom was a school psychologist and she spoke at understand.me, um, how our brains hit as extroverts is that we actually get a little bit of a dopamine hit in the front part of our brain in that cortex. So when I have a conversation with you, it literally charges my battery like having solar. So every time I talk and you talk, we act, my energy, my vibration lifts. So I'm charging my battery when I talk. Now, an introvert on the opposite side, uh, when they talk, it's like their battery's being drained on their phone. And so they literally have to go to a quiet room, um, like a hotel room or an office and plug in. And that is how they they recharge their batteries. So when I'm talking to you and we're going back and forth, my my dopamine's hitting and I'm I'm charging my batteries. And and when 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 Russell or other introverts are talking, the information doesn't hit the front of the brain. It travels all the way through the brain so they can think about their response, think about what they're gonna do, and then it comes back up. And then they speak and that just takes more energy. Believe it or not, you can burn. I forgot where I read it, but somewhere around 50 percent. Believe it or not, do your research. 50 percent of your calories can be burned 
from your brain. That's crazy. Isn't yeah. that crazy? That. It yeah. blew my mind when I saw that. Yeah, it is. It is kind of wild. And and you know the thing with when it comes to parents and kids, like you, if you're an introvert, like it's going to be hard to become an extrovert. You have to you have to play the cards that you were given and know how to operate on those levels and 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 understand who you are. Understand dot me, like you know, understand dot me is where it out. you can you can figure all that stuff out. So as you as you progressed, you started like a um, a company that you were you were doing sales calls and, and selling things for people. And then all of a sudden you got led down the, the trail to something that is I don't know. You, you still don't have that going on, right? What the hemp? No, 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 no. The, the, the one before where you were selling like other people's stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's direct marketing. So that was like mailing list, Dan Kennedy style. Um, that's not really in business. I, I, I've i exited a couple of those companies over the years. Um, mm -hmm. And the reason why I had to exit the last one was I had to figure out how to heal my son yeah. uh, who had developed. He was a healthy child and he developed uh, severe autism, which is when I started the 101hemp.org because we found out that juicing hemp or cannabis uh, just like broccoli or or celery juice um, actually help detoxify his brain and he's no longer on the spectrum uh, or autism is what it's called as well. So that's my that was a huge pivot in my life um, when I went from, you know, direct marketing sales to um, hemp and CBD. And that was, you know, six, seven years ago now. And uh, that's when I met Russell is because um, we were opening stores. I'm actually at one of my stores right now. I have a backdrop here, but I'm at one of the stores in Ventura. Uh, California and uh, and COVID hit. Well, before COVID, we were opening stores like popcorn because it was so hot and everyone loved it. And it's great for pain and stress and sleep and other chronic ailments without side effects. It's just plant juice. Kind of yeah, like when you think of aloe vera it, on a sunburn. You had given me a few bottles, but I bought a few hundred dollars worth. And, you know, I take a little bit every day. I think you have to be consistent every day. You take a little dose, a little dose. And mm -hmm. I've been doing I, I, I'm actually like I need another around. I've got about half a bottle left. But but yeah, I think I'm I'm more the one you had given me. It's not the citrus; it's the other one, that, more mm -hmm. of a, the, the pain. But it, it has yeah. such a good flavor; like it's amazing. You like blackberry you don't cobbler is the most popular flavor. Yeah, That's it's just, that is so ridiculous, and it's pretty cool that you guys will will cold. Everything is cold pressed, so you're not mm -hmm. heating it up and destroying the the chemical value in it. And that's Correct. where the magic comes from. And it's just yep. what you guys are doing is so more intensified. There's a lot of, you see yep. CBD everywhere, the gas station and here and there, mm -hmm. but you really don't know what's in it, but you guys are growing your own hemp and stuff, right? You got it out here in California. And, and uh, it's, it's been miracle that literally that raw hemp, the cold press is, is up to a thousand times more effective uh, because our bodies know what to do with raw plants and vegetables. We've been eating them for tens of thousands of years. And this this particular plant just happens to be the superfood of superfoods. So I'm super excited that it's uh, helping you. And, and just so how it pivots into Russell, COVID hit. And like everything went online. 17% of Americans shopped online first before March of 2020. Meaning you were already getting your groceries delivered. You were already using Uber Eats. You were already... Um, you know, shopping primarily on Amazon, 17% of the country, U.S. That number quadrupled when it happened with COVID. Grandma is getting her, her groceries delivered now, right? Mm -hmm. So we were conditioned as a country. And this is around the world too, but just focusing on the U.S., we were conditioned to shop online first. So that's when I knew because I was, I was uh, you know, already mm -hmm. exposed to Russell. He had started Mastermind.com with Dean Graziosi and Tony Robbins. So I knew of him and I, and I loved his passion about, you know, serving those you're called to serve. And so as soon as COVID hit, I knew that that was going to be the guy. And as soon as he opened up the inner circle, which is his mastermind, uh, it was in October of 21, I believe, at FHL when they had the first FHL. I, I knew I had to get in the room, which I think is so important for, for anyone who's looking to level up their life, just like you jumped on that golf course. Mm. Um, Myron charges 350,000 um, and, and up to a million, but I know there's a, there's a package $350,000 a day to spend a day with Myron. And you got to golf with Myron for three or four hours or however long you were there for green fees for a couple us, hundred bucks. He calls himself Miran Gelden. I said, remember you was doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's funny, man. So, yeah, it, it's it's wild, and and you know you talk about action takers now. Now, when it comes to Russell Brunson and your once in a lifetime opportunity, mm -hmm. um, you happen to hear through the grapevine that 
someone was selling a a collection that might have interested him because there are a lot of old books and that's kind of what opened the door for you right you want yeah. to talk about that a little bit just yeah so i was in the inner circle uh, we have a private facebook group and we kind of help each other and we have you know celebrate wins or we have asks or gives and things like that and uh i also subscribe to russell's uh newsletter the no bs newsletter um, that he had bought from dan kennedy that is a marketing newsletter for small businesses that's been running since 1992. And so in the back of one of the newsletters, um, it was an article about uh, Napoleon Hill. Napoleon Hill wrote it, actually, I should say. And he said there was no such thing as education. There's only self-education, you know, kind of talking about what we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. It's a great article. And basically, he's just saying life experience, overcoming adversity. The only way you're going to learn anything is to go do. And I, so I posted that picture of that article in the Facebook group and said, are you guys reading this? Like, this is crazy good. And then I put at the bottom of the uh, of the post, I said, oh, by the way, um, a billionaire in Hollywood Hills is having a private Napoleon Hill auction. And Don Green, the president of Napoleon Hill Foundation, is going to be there. So if anybody wants to go with me, uh, hit me up and I'll shoot you the deets. Now, in the back of my maybe in, in the front of my head, I was really just shooting for other inner circle members out here in Southern California so we could go. But maybe subconsciously, I knew I was planting a seed for Russell because he always he'll read through this through the uh, inner circle stuff. And literally, I'm talking eight seconds later, chirp, <laughs> chirp on the Voxer because that's what Russell uses to talk. And it's basically like leaving voicemails for each other. And he's like, hey, dude, what's the deets? And that was it. I mean, as soon as I told him I was going, he said, hey, could you help me out? Like, I'm just bought a boat for my family. I'm going to take it out for the first time. And so I got him everything that he wanted. I got him a great deal on all this stuff. I was his his uh, proxy to get at the auction. And and instead of mailing it to him, I, I, I flew out on a plane. So it was an idea that I had and spontaneous and, and trust your instincts. You know, those are the whispers from God. Just go with it. If you hear. And so immediately I was like, why would I FedEx this? Number one, it's worth more than ten thousand dollars, which I think that's insure stuff up to. Number two, if it got lost. You could never replace it. These are like first signed edition. Like there was like checks and books and all kinds of stuff. And number three, what a great way to um, to to connect, to genuinely connect. Yep. So I, I boxed Russell and say, hey, man, I got all your stuff. You want me to deliver it this Friday or next Friday? And Russell, of course, said this Friday, right? So I flew out. It's actually in the documentary that's uh, coming out soon, Bibliomania. And I flew out and I handcuffed myself to a click funnel suitcase and the camera was there and we had all kinds of fun with it. But then after we went through everything and this was the thing that lit Russell up, I, I said, Hey man, is there anything else I can do for you? And he said, Hey, I'm, you know, I'm really, I'm not connecting with the foundation. Maybe you could help. And that was it. I flew out on a plane to meet Don green on my dime. It was my idea. I figured out everything that Don wanted. I knew everything that Russell wanted. We did a handshake deal, like a good Southern gentleman had an iced tea and it was iced. And so that was how we began our relationship um, and now we have Secrets of Success, where we're featuring the greatest personal development book, the most sold of all time, Think and Grow Rich. And uh, yeah, the rest is history, as they say. Yeah, it's it, I I love watching from afar, and it's it's going to be awesome to be part of it. I, I'm looking forward to it. Um, just you know, my passion. I've like I said, I've given dozens of that book away, copies of that book, and and you've just been instrumental in my life. I I actually there's. I don't know if you know or not, but inside of that book is a, they call it the, the self-confidence formula. I don't know if you know what that is, but I read that every day. I know I have the ability to achieve the object of my definite purpose in life. Therefore, I demand of myself persistent and continuous action towards its attainment. I hear now promise to render such action. And that's like the number one. And I read that every single day. I mean, it's like, hold on a second. I just got a mantra, I, baby. The I, mantra. Don't want to tell you, I don't want to tell you that I, I have to prove my case, but hold on. Oh, yeah, I, I, I believe you, brother. Right here. That's it. Nice. You know, I read that every single day and it's, it's, it, it has been crazy for me, but I, I'm going to ask you one last question. And we'll wrap it up. What is a tip? Let's say you have, you have kids and, and what's your, your big tip for other parents for a kid that they, they can tell their kid like, Hey, this is the tip from Justin about what you should do as a teenager coming up. And we'll Again, up. I, yeah. I mean, I, I think the biggest thing we can do as parents is, um, is find what lights our children up now, whether it's baseball for me or which became sales and then entrepreneurship, um, just continue to um, expose your children to to new things, you know, whether it's martial arts or poetry or music. And I mean, just give them an opportunity to 
to try anything. And and then when there's that spark, then you just go all in and you support them. And you never know what that spark could be and what that spark could lead to. Because, you know, at the end of the day, we want our children to be happy and we want to give them, you know, the greatest. I believe our job is to set our children up for success. So whether it's teaching them these principles that we know that it worked um, or, or whether it's, you know, supporting them in whatever passion that they have. Um, cause, and, and again, like a lot, there's a lot of helicopter parent stuff kind of going on. It's a different uh, world is just remember, like when your kids turn 18, you know, they're going to either, you know, they're going to go off and live on their own and, you know, hopefully <laughs> go to college and, 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 and live their life and you're not going to be there. So if, if you're like doing things that, you know, are, makes you feel good or you're trying to like, you know, whatever, protect them and things like that. That's not doing them any justice. Like my, my kids, they always know. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm teaching them tough lessons. I want them to be prepared and, and to be able to make good decisions when I'm not around. Now, of course, if I'm still physically on this earth and you can, you can give me a call or shoot me a text anytime or come home and do the laundry and all that kind of stuff. But I'm preparing them to be adults, set them up for success so they can be happy, do the things that they love, make good decisions, understand there's consequences for bad decisions, uh, but and, and not be a, just because you failed at something doesn't mean you're a failure. It's just a stepping stone in the process to success. And, you know, one of the great questions I like we have dinner every night is like, you know, we always ask, like, what are you grateful for? Or what was something that you did to help someone else? Having these dinner questions. Another one is, what did you fail at? Because if you failed at something, at least that meant you tried, right? And then what was the lesson that you could apply the next time uh, that you try something? So that would be my two cents. Also, just I'd have to throw it out there. We got to talk about the Think and Grow Rich Challenge. Yeah, exactly. No, that you was going to be my okay. next thing. Like, yeah. let everybody know what, what's coming down the line the next couple of weeks. Yeah, well, I mean, it's uh, May 8th. There's going to be the live May 8th, May 9th, May 10th. We're going to have the greatest speakers in personal development. We're going to have insiders from Think and Grow Rich. Make sure you go to Jeff's link. I'm sure he'll have a link in the show notes or wherever you're watching or listening to this. Get signed up. It's totally, totally free. Um, just all you have to do is enter your email address, and you can watch three days of deep dive, just like Jeff has uh, talked about how this book has changed his life. Uh, there is like a $47 upgrade where you get 30 day free access to the secrets of success membership, which is incredible. We mail you three books, two unpublished, um, you know, Napoleon Hill manuscripts, including one think and grow rich hardback uh, book that is actually put on by Russell. Uh, and you get all the recordings and you get access to the VIPs and all that kind of stuff for like 47 bucks. It's a steal. It could change your life. I know Think and Grow Rich has changed my life. It's changed Jeff's life. It's changed millions of people's lives. Even if you've owned it, even if you think you've read it, if you haven't studied it and applied it, come join us May 8th, May 9th, May 10th. We may even have it on an evergreen. I'm not sure. So if you're listening to this in 2025 or whenever, still go to wherever Jeff's link is there uh, for the Think and Grow Rich Challenge and sign up because it could change your life. I know one book changed my life and uh, this could be the book that changes yours and your children's. Absolutely. Well, Justin, thanks for your time today and look forward to chatting again. See ya. All right, brother. Thanks for having me. We'll see you on the golf course soon. All right. Bye. Thanks for listening to today's show. To check out more great cannabis podcasts, go to podconnects.com. Here's a preview of one of our other shows. Hi, my name's Kate, and I'm your host of the Pop Moms Podcast. I started the Pop Moms Podcast, well, because I wanted to end the stigma against using cannabis, specifically with moms, but also anyone who chooses to consume. I strive for a balance of humor and education, along with some pretty rad guests, to help combat social biases that come with consuming cannabis. Kids are hard. Join me for regular podcast episodes packed with parenting hacks, real-life stories, and of course, my favorite cannabis products. The days are long, but the years are short, so roll another J and take a deep breath. Keep blazing and stay amazing.